In every Super Mario game, you work towards the final showdown with the big bad villain, who left the Mushroom Kingdom or any other land in ruin. However, out of these epic showdowns, which ones are the best, most interesting and fun? Well, let's find out! Number 6 This one is a classic, a game that defined the world of video games as a whole and the Super Mario series, Super Mario 64. And here we have quite an iconic fight with Bowser, which was in 3D for the very first time. During each battle, Bowser can only be attacked by grabbing his tail, spinning him around, and tossing him into one of the several mines surrounding the arena. He tilts the platform upon landing, unleashes a shockwave, breathes fire, leaps up and pounds down on the ground, and occasionally claws at Mario if he gets close. And during the fire sea battle, Bowser can warp from one section of the platform to another, and also pound the platform to tilt it, and can also spit single balls of fire. Clearly he has a wide range of attacks in this game, and it was clear that the new 3D look had an impact on it. A lot of things in the fight work especially well with it, like the mines that you need to throw him against, and the platform that falls away and moves around. It also took inspiration from older fights like Super Mario World and Super Mario Bros. 3, but this time it all feels completely new. For a first 3D final boss for the company, it was certainly a huge achievement. The whole spinning of Bowser was genius and made extremely good use of the round arena in a 3D world. This fight is certainly the best the series had seen so far. The terrain you fight on is part of it, it makes use of 3D in a clever way by making Mario toss Bowser around, and Bowser has a plethora of attacks that need to be dodged in different ways. It certainly deserves to be on the list. Number 5 Now the first time we ever saw a different villain apart from Bowser was in a bit of a strange game. Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins. Here Wario, driven by a lifetime of jealousy, sought to take over Mario's castle in the country of Mario Land. And so Mario goes to save his own country, which was quite a shock to the fans because everything in this game was quite different from the normal plot and villain. Now the final battle with Wario consists of three stages. First, Wario will be charging across the room and stomping the ground, which causes the lights moving across the ceiling above to fall. During the second, he uses a carrot and transforms. He leaps up and flutters across the screen before finally slamming the ground, again causing lights to fall from above. And in the last one, he uses a fire flower and leaps across the screen, shooting fireballs after he lands. When Wario is defeated, he shrinks down to a tiny size and punts his shoe at Mario before running off the castle's balcony, crying. Now, this entire encounter is great because of two reasons. First of all, the fact that it's not Bowser for once, but actually someone with completely new attacks, who is more similar to Mario in terms of tactics. He was more agile and fast than Bowser was in most of the 2D games, making him special and different to battle. The other thing that makes him a fun one is the fact that he uses power-ups in a fight just like Mario would. It's really like battling Mario's evil twin brother. But sadly enough, the fight is quite easy, and a bit too easy in my opinion. So if this fight was harder, then it would have ended up higher on the list for sure. Number 4 Here we are going to talk about another game that was quite different from the normal formula, but is still considered a Super Mario game. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Here you take on the younger version of Bowser as Yoshi, because Mario is also a baby at this point. In the final fight, he attacks by ground pounding wherever Yoshi is, creating shockwaves on the ground. In addition, if baby Mario is knocked off of Yoshi's back, baby Bowser climbs onto his back instead, and if he is saved afterward, baby Bowser will be stunned. He can be hit by ground pounding the ground close to him, and after three hits, you have beaten him. However, Kamek transforms him into a huge version of himself, destroying the castle around him. He sends debris down to destroy part of the ground, and during the second phase, he attacks by breathing fireballs at Yoshi, advancing in the background, and if he gets too close, it's over. He must grab the giant eggs that Baron von Zeppelin's carry onto the stage, and throw them into the background at Big Baby Bowser to knock him back. After enough hits, he simply charges forward, 
and after 7 hits he is defeated. Now clearly you can already understand that this is an amazing boss fight that especially in the second form becomes extremely good. Something like this was as far as I know never seen in the entire series. A fight like this is so extremely unique and uses one of the main mechanics in the game and makes it into a Pacific Rim shooter, except you're not a badass robot. And even the first form is a ton of fun and does some interesting stuff like jumping on your back. Besides that, the whole building just falls away, making for a great transition. It does so many things different in an exceptional way. Number 3 now Mario has also been outside of the Mushroom Kingdom, and the best one has to be his wacky adventures in space. Here Bowser also stepped up his game, creating all kinds of insane stuff, and this leads to an incredible boss fight with him at the end. Because during the final battle, Mario fights Bowser on multiple planets. On the first planet, he attacks by using his shockwaves, then curls up into a ball and rolls around the planet, with his head exposed to attack. On the second planet, Bowser's attacks include curling up into two combined shells and rolling around the planet as well as firing fireballs. By hitting him with a stretch plant, Bowser is knocked onto his back and begins moving around the planet and can then be defeated as normal. And on the last one, the same happens but with more improved tactics this time. Overall, this is an exceptional battle with Bowser on a gigantic scale. The fact that it's on multiple planets in freaking space makes the whole experience a lot better. It just adds so much cool scenery with that aesthetic. Besides that, you get a ton of different attacks coming your way, which is a breath of fresh air compared to the previous game Super Mario Sunshine. Especially the stretch plants were a lot of fun to mess around with because of the wacky physics they have. And navigating the planets that you run on is also a lot of fun when you need to make him hit the glass with lava. It's certainly a really good mechanic that fits extremely well with the idea of the game. This also goes for the shockwaves that he does when jumping. Because of the round form, dodging it becomes harder and it looks really cool in itself to see. Overall this fight is great from a gameplay and visual perspective. And yes, the fact that it's in space and uses elements of it makes it go up in points a lot. Number 2 at some point, Nintendo was thinking, oh -ho, what if we finally revive the 2D side-scroller aspect of the Super Mario series? And so New Super Mario Bros was born. Yes, I have a cold, and I was still able to do a Mickey Mouse voice. And the Wii version of this game has an unbelievable boss fight. Bowser is located in the final chamber and shoots fireballs at Mario, similar to his appearance in the original Super Mario Bros and New Super Mario Bros. When he eventually falls, it all seems to be over. However, the Princess Peach in a cage nearby turns out to be Kamek in disguise. He escapes from the cage and casts a spell over the chasm that Bowser has fallen down. Thanks to this, you get to fight Super Bowser. He attacks by spitting massive fireballs as well as clawing away at the walls and leaping over to Mario if he's far enough away. Now the first round of this fight is really simplistic. Still fun and a good shout out to the classic, but nothing too special. However, when he turns big, the most exciting part starts. He even knocks Kamek unconscious. The fight is a cool showdown between Bowser and Mario with a new side-scroller chase switch that works out really well for it, especially if you keep in mind what Bowser looks like now. He is gigantic and seems impossible to defeat, so you have to run, and it's quite a long way filled with all kinds of dangerous scenarios while avoiding fireballs and trying to use them to form a path to escape. Things like this should be used more in these games because it adds such a cool twist and they don't really play with that stuff a whole lot. It's a brutal showdown that ends up becoming a race for the prize, which is Peach. And if you fall behind, it's all over. Number 1 The Nintendo Switch was a gamble according to some. However, in the end, it brought us many gifts like Super Mario Odyssey. The final showdown with Bowser in this game is just amazing. There's so much to it, so many different tactics, and even a twist at the very end. 
In battle, Bowser equips boxing gloves on his hat, who will throw it at Mario, who must then hit it with Cappy to stop it and flip it over, allowing him to put it on and punch with it. Once Bowser sees his main weapon disabled, he will ground pound around the arena, sending flaming shockwaves. He may also throw large brick balls, which can be destroyed with the boxing glove hat. In the end, Mario must repeatedly punch Bowser to send him flying. Besides that, he has some other tricks up his sleeve, like purple duplicates of the hat, spinning around, breathing a stream of fire around the arena, and throwing flaming versions of his shell, which cannot be punched away like the bricks. Additionally, for the final hit, Bowser must be punched repeatedly again after spinning three times. So there's a lot to experience in this fight, and to be honest, it's not that easy and can certainly give you some trouble. However, it's so much fun. While it is a bit of a roller coaster with the same steps every time, it still offers enough to entertain almost every player. Certainly when he breathes fire, it looks really cool, and it's also a tough one to dodge, making it extra fun. So after a lengthy battle with Bowser, you think it's all over, and you win after these horrific trials. Well, yes but Super Mario Odyssey also does something different. While this isn't necessarily part of the boss fight, it is part of the ending of the game, so it fits together I think. And geez, the final section of this is amazing. Mario is ultimately forced to capture Bowser to get himself and everyone else to safety. So you have a whole section where you need to run through obstacles with Bowser, which really blew my mind. It's so much fun and extremely unexpected after such a grand and serious boss fight but I love it to death. So this one certainly deserves to be number one. Hey you there, thank you for watching, you lovely. I hope you could endure my uh, disease riddled voice. I, I have a really bad cold, but I still managed to do it. So show me your support f by liking this video and subscribing and clicking the bell button and watching more videos. Yay, give me AdSense, kids.